clout chasing clout chasing is um it's a lot like clout chasing gets a bad rap in it similar to um similar to kids that buy their entire sneaker collection off of StockX. it gets a bit of a bad reputation um I guess because of the term, it kind of, you know, I guess it's similar to like fuckboy. You know, you don't want to be known as that because, you know, it has bad connotations or hype beasts and stuff. But I guess if you embrace it and you're able to kind of, and it truthfully or accurately represents you, it's not such a bad thing, I don't think, in that regard. Um, same with being an Instagram influencer or being a quote unquote thought. I don't think it's a bad thing if that actually is actually what you are. You have to be able to live your truth, right? We only get one shot at this life. Why, why waste your time trying to be, uh, trying to ascribe yourself a, uh, a character or a trait or a personality that is not necessarily you just live your authentic self and kind of go from there so with that being said gq featured uh this kid called zach b on their site uh made an entire story kind of unraveling the mystery behind him what kind of makes him tick and i guess again i'm not that familiar with the dude i guess i've seen his face here and there on some people's pages but there's a lot of hoopla behind how he essentially got himself in a position where he's surrounded by you know the jenners the drakes the tyler the creators all these kind of people in culture people kind of lap up and i guess part of it has to do with this kind of the article does i think he has called this on gq said who is that beer right i got his here on screen put it up on there so i guess a lot of the fascination does come from this idea that i think most of the fascination comes from the, the this thing that we haven't necessarily been able to categorize or to kind of uh make a term for it or to kind of figure out why what exactly this new celebrity is it's not the conventional because the conventional type was where well, you had a you had a talent right the talent that you had a service that you a talent or a product that you made right that necessarily put you on a pedestal and had people kind of you know that that's how you got your attention right you played the sax really well you were beast on the piano you were kind of you know an animal on the guitar whatever it may be that's what kind of drew people towards you and then that's where you kind of got the whole idea behind celebrity right people went to follow you around blah blah blah. but obviously in the modern age especially with the advent of smartphone and social media things have kind of changed a little bit where the idea of talent is a bit uh, nefarious and a little bit it's a little bit irrelevant nowadays because part of the appeal of these kind of new celebrities is that they're like me and you right they're just average everyday folk who decide to kind of turn on their phone turn on their webcam get freaky and suddenly they receive a cult following because people connect with them or identify themselves with them in some way shape or form so it's hard to kind of get your head around it and because it's hard to get your head around it there's a big group of people on the internet who are like very much against it and very big people who are very much for it I guess people for it are are kind of happy to see somebody that looks like them or looks like an average everyday folk kind of making it because it gives them hope and for people that aren't necessarily happy with it have this idea that everyone that's talent everyone that's a celebrity should be like michael jackson right they should be able they should be they should be so out of their kind of remit of what is possible that it makes sense why they're celebrity the fact that somebody just looks like you and is an average everyday folk kind of might make you feel a little bit envious it might make you feel a little bit bitter because you know it, why are they doing it and i'm not so it can get a bit weird to judge properly but i like it i think especially for the kids coming up it's great that they're able to see different ways of approaching a problem right and the problem might be you want more clout you want to get in the room you want to you know have a career in the arts entertainment i like that they're able to see different paths towards it because i think yesteryears you know we did have a bit more of a clear way of defining what talent was but it was also really hard to get in right you had gatekeepers you had to convince somebody who wasn't necessarily doing anything who was just kind of you know holding the door open right signing forms faxing stuff um sending stuff in a post you had to convince them to let you in right and so usually those people were very aware that the job that they were doing anyone could do it so they wouldn't they would really make your life difficult they make it difficult for you to get in because they're afraid that if you do get in with your new energy and your new ideas, you could take their job. Of course, it's a scarcity mindset and it probably wasn't true. If they kind of let you in and kind of mentored you, they could probably have, you could probably help them make, you could, they could, you could have probably helped them look better. But of course, you know, people don't think that way. So I guess for the kids coming up, it's good that they have the idea, they have the idea that you don't need to be the Zach Beer dude. You could do it your own way, but he's shown you a different way to get involved where it doesn't require you to have an industry connection. You don't need to have, you don't need to be sucking up for certain artists or, you know, begging to get a look. It's an approach that kind of focuses on the work. And 
this is the way it kind of gets fishy because if you read the article i think part of the a bit of the first bit is a little bit more of you know there's a lot of like wanking off of the guy and you know make kind of setting the scene it's a little bit fluffy obviously you've got this kind of cool picture of him djing and he's you know, alongside uh kai, Ger- kai gerber right the model um it's a little bit fluffy but once you get to the meat of it what you realize is that much like some of the socialites from back in the day or some of the industry professionals that kind of work their way up a lot of this has just been a lot of hard work and that's where it gets hard right because the hard work that he's talking about is about going out it's about socializing it's about you know tagging people sending dms uh befriending security guards bartenders event promoters bar managers all this stuff that doesn't really look well doesn't really resonate that well on social right no one gives a shit you taking a picture of you know big george at the front of one oak right people want to see the picture of you with drake but to in order to get the drake picture you need to befriend big george you need to get him a sandwich you need to buy him some weed right whatever you need to talk to him about the football all that is work and that requires you having to you know appear go to the club week day after day after day especially the la club scene where it's majority of the time i think they usually go out between the days of like wednesday and sunday right they, they don't really open that late either it's quite you know it's a bit like london everything closes at 2 a.m so there is a short window in order to kind of get the action and to kind of, and plus everything is spread out quite you know it's spread out um there's not a really good public transport system you have to drive everywhere you have to pay for parking so there's a lot of obstacles that kind of don't allow you to kind of bounce around and kind of connect and network with people you have to really be tactical in how you do it and you have to also hope that people like you but the entire story kind of really resonates because i like the idea that he kind of because you know you i think you read the story especially if you're reading on the forums you get this idea that he was this kid that you know his dad owned one of i don't know one of these kind of bougie places but he's just a regular dude who kind of got an in because he was able to attend i think he went to a party once right and he bumped into fetty wap and fetty wap then kind of liked his vibe and from there the the bar manager got him back in again because he thought he's the one that was fetty wap's plug and then the kind of novelty that he looks the way he does also helps right he's kind of this rosy cheeked um infant looking dude who's actually 23 so he looks a lot younger than what he is and he doesn't look like anyone else that's on the scene it kind of helps his image right he's kind of like a a, a kind of a for lack of a better term like a chad sort of dude who kind of hangs around these cool places but also it doesn't look corny and it all looks organic but then one bit that i think was really handy what he said was again is something that kind of it doesn't need to be said but sometimes it's good to be said is that the way he got in and the way people liked him was that he was just normal right he was able to kind of vibe in the room he didn't first for the picture he didn't go for the selfie straight away he built an actual relationship and of course these relationships aren't necessarily real i think you realize i think i realized that i don't know should i say real because i'm putting i'm projecting a little bit but i realized that quite early on when i was doing my moving and shaking in london that i didn't necessarily have the des- the deposition de- 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 deposition or the temperament to do what he does i couldn't necessarily go to the clubs and you know try and finagle an entry in or beg to get on the list the times i did do it ended in catastrophe right it ended in a fucking shouting matches of suit because my pride got in the way i had too much of an ego I always assumed that I would be the one on the other side of the, of the other side of the rope, right? So it didn't allow me to go in there. And again, it might be a character flaw of mine on some regard, but I think you realize quite quickly where you sit in, or where you kind of want to be placed, right? So in positioning, you know, when some brands are like, oh, I want to be on the main floor, menswear floor on Selfridges, right? You want to be next to the brands that you kind of aspire to be like, even though your product might not be there. That's the kind of way that I think about things. So I kind of knew, okay, I can't be that dude. So I kind of took myself out of it but from afar i can definitely appreciate a kid like that who's able to kind of see where he fits in the grand scheme of things and then play his position he's not trying to be like the the guy in the front front you just want to be the guy you know left of center the one you always see behind like kind of maneuvering and networking and doing the thing and it's a very particular skill because i think sometimes what people don't realize is that once you get around actual celebrities right their aura and their kind of uh force field or their kind of a law it can kind of pull you in and start to make you think you're on their level you're the same people and you maybe get a bit too comfortable you get a bit too familiar and then that can suddenly uh put them off completely because they 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 have their spidey senses tingling because they know that because of their level of notoriety and celebrity people are always trying to extract value for them they're always trying to take 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 so the moment you kind of get around them and you start being thirsty the relationship just goes, takes a nosedive. But if you're able to kind of mellow down a little bit and understand the position that you play, you, you, you let's just say, I'm the list guy. 
I get them on the list. I get them in, right? You're able to do that in the right particular way. It definitely can kind of boost your chances of actually becoming quote unquote industry friends. Now, again, you're not friends, friends. They're not going to text your mom happy birthday. They don't know your middle name, um, you know, whatever it may be. But, and again, as soon as you're not cool, they're going to dump you. But if you're able to kind of go into it clear headed and know where you, where you, where you kind of sit, you know what the long term plan is because again he can't do this forever right he's obviously got some things in the work i think he mentions he's going to go on tour with lucas about he's got an art gallery thing he wants to do he's got his own brand the psych world stuff that he does which i didn't know i learned on the thing i've seen the brand pop on my instagram but he's behind that as well so those things are and obviously a way for him to kind of diversify his portfolio and diversify his kind of revenue stream and obviously his career prospects because he can go in different directions it might be an acting thing there he might be into stand-up you don't know whatever Loads of things to get into but as long as you know where you place and you know the hierarchy right you know where you sit i think it kind of works out better but I'm, I'm pretty sure people don't do it that often and people get a bit giddy because i'm sure once you get in a room with these people it just something happens to you where you just lose all your senses and you suddenly start to become a bit of a groupie but definitely reading the story you can definitely tell that a lot of the work that he'd done in the beginning is just kind of being the quote-unquote plug and kind of playing his position and just being chill really helped him establish actual connections with these people and again it must be nice if you're a celebrity and you're kind of hanging out with a kid who's just normal right he doesn't suck you off he talks about normal stuff he has interesting background interesting he has it's interesting i think that's what is that freud said that right to be interesting you have to be into into interesting things or something like that um that might be nice right not to have somebody that's just completely sucking oh i listened to your album it's so amazing like maybe he's able to pick out a track that he likes or ask about a particular arrangement or a track listing thing like that can be interesting but again i think it's a really good profile whether or not the kids will actually take knowledge of it and see what actually goes into achieving a picture like this is something to be said but i don't know but i think it's good to see that there's different approaches to to getting in there and again i'm i'm all for it man i, I, I grew up in a generation where you had to kind of you know beg people to get on a guest list via email it's probably the sort of same thing but there was a little bit more of a there was a little bit more of a gatekeeper mentality right where they kind of wanted to keep all the fruits to themselves they didn't want to share it but i think with these kids now especially with the internet they're able to kind of make their own little thing and then kind of kind of insert that into the general population right into the kind of conversation and kind of expand from there um again really interesting profile and i think the last bit here kind of sums up why i think his approach works really well here's a thinker's approach i think a quote from like virgil that was really cool here what does it say here um yep yeah, so the the so here's a philosophy i thought was really interesting here this paragraph here it says um we know we shouldn't care who zach beer is and yet we do but i'm starting to think it's an impulse worth following that we should care about the identity of this noted uh celebrity pal the music the television industries are being turned inside out by streaming the way we shop and go out and make friends has been transformed by the internet and social media fashion is being led by people like virgil abloh who weren't allowed to set shows a decade ago and now beer has put himself right there in the middle straddling the line of talent management of influencer and fixer if someone figured out how to turn uh hanging out with cool people into a lifestyle the business wouldn't you want to talk to them and i think that's interesting i think that's that is definitely because you could definitely not i don't think anyone could do it because again i think he mentions in the article that he goes out you know he's only been home two days in his life or something like that so it is an excruciating you know schedule it does require you to because you're i don't know if he drinks a lot you have to kind of make sure your regiment is quite direct you have to know where to be you can't waste time in shitty places you've got to be able to i think you mentioned the article you've got to move like a shark on the dance floor and bounce around from spot to spot and talk to the right people but again it shows where the levels are at so if you're able to kind of take his approach and apply it to your level pace of interest um you could go far because just to sit there and rely on your talent alone because i think that's what i spoke about in the beginning talent is important but how you're able to market yourself and position yourself is also very much important is also as important or maybe more important because you know you can have all the talent in the world but if you don't have the right broadcasting methods or the right way to kind of amplify your message who's going to know about it and if no one knows about it why are you making it that's the problem that we have on there but yeah definitely check out the article it's written, I think it's written by sam hines right one of the gq style podcast dudes is it sam hines yeah, yeah samuel hine it's called who is that beer i'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out really interesting article Again, for the kids that want to make it in the industry, definitely have a read, have a read, have a read.